Shabbat Shalom. When I'm in the sanctuary at BZBI, I love to look at the stained glass windows, the way the light spills through on sunny days and paints the pews with color, the way the windows depict scenes from our Torah that change color as the sun shifts outside. In this year of the virus, windows have taken on heightened meaning. As we have been separated from one another, walled off to keep ourselves and each other safe, as this time of uncertainty stretches on, windows have kept us connected to one another. I remember a widely shared video that was taken in Siena, Italy, as that country became one of the first in the world to enforce a lockdown as their COVID cases spiked. The video showed a street after dark, deserted, its inhabitants cooped up in their apartments as another day in isolation flowed into night. Somewhere, one person began to sing a folk song out his window. And soon all of the neighbors joined in. Similarly, in Jerusalem, this spring and summer, people chanted the Psalms of Kabbalat Shabbat and sang Zmirot together through their open windows and from their mirpasot, their balconies. In the spring, in what became for us a daily ritual, we would call my mother-in-law Shoshana in Manhattan just before 7 p.m. She would take us with her to the window of her apartment to join in as she and her Upper West Side neighbors clapped and cheered for essential workers. The empty caverns of the city echoing with the clanging of pans and other improvised instruments of celebration of catharsis. Over FaceTime each night we would join with thousands of New Yorkers who came to their windows to be part of this collective call to community this prayer of gratitude, this creative way of coping, this defiant show of resilience, this yearning for more life. In our community, many of us have displayed colorful signs on our windows, rainbows, BZBI chamsas, thank yous to our doctors and nurses, sanitation workers and postal workers, and all who labor to keep life going each day. We have signs reminding people to mask up and be safe. We have posted the words, Black Lives Matter. The signs in our windows declare, we see you, we hear you, we are here with you. In these days leading up to the election, windows campaign for candidates, windows encourage all of us, vote, make a plan. So, it was not a surprise that in this week's Parsha, Noah, I was drawn to the enigmatic appearance of a window. When God decides to wipe out the world, God taps Noah and instructs him to build a teva, an ark of gopher wood with compartments covered with pitch of specific dimensions in which he and his family can take refuge. God says to Noah, Sohar ta'aseh lativa, make a sohar in the ark, make an opening for light in the ark. This word sohar is a mysterious word. It's what we call a hapax legomenon, which is a word that appears only once in the entire Bible. Hapax legomenon is a lot of fun to say, so invite you where you are. If you'd like to try and say it 10 times fast, no one will hear you. Hapax legomenon, hapax legomenon. Um, but each occurrence in the Torah of a hapax legomenon is a treasure for the rabbis who obsess over unearthing the meaning of each word and letter and crown and tail in the Torah. So what is the meaning of this word Sohar? According to Rashi, some say that the Sohar was a window. Others say that it was a precious stone that gave light to all those who were in the ark. In the Talmud, Masechet Sanhedrin, Rabbi Yochanan connects the word Sohar to the word Soharaim, which means afternoon. And he understands God's instruction to Noah to mean 
set precious stones and jewels in the ark so that they will shine for you as the afternoon, as the Tzoharayim. The debate among the rabbis about whether the Tzohar is a skylight or a precious gem is recorded in Midrash Rabbah on Genesis. Rabbi Pinchas teaches in Rabbi Levi's name. During the whole 12 months that Noah was in the ark before the floodwaters receded, he did not require the light of the sun by day or the light of the moon by night, but he had a polished gem which he hung up. When it was dim, he knew that it was day, and when it shone, he knew that it was night. Perhaps the darker it was outside, the brighter the stone gleamed. Yet, according to the Midrash, this miraculous stone was necessary because during the time of the flood, day and night ceased to exist. Lo nikar ben yom uven laila, the Midrash says, one couldn't tell the difference between day and night. And this Tsohar, this magical stone, allowed those on the ark to orient themselves, to find some kind of agency in the midst of the storm, to stay connected to something beyond themselves. During the flood, the world reverted to chaos. God's artistic feats, the distinctions of creation fashioned out of formlessness were undone. Day and night were scrambled. Noah and his family had to find their own structure and routines in the ark. Some animals had to be fed in the daytime and others ate at night, so they needed to keep track of time somehow. I remember when our youngest, Sheer, was first born, his big sister, Zohar, asked us, is he nocturnal? And for parents of new babies, parents of college students living at home, or many of us who can't sleep these days with the incessant barrage of news, the monotony, the upheaval, the worry about what's next, we could use a tzohar of some kind to help us find our bearings. Reading the Parsha this year, it comes alive in a new way, as so much about our lives has been disrupted, as our country is in the thick of grief, as at least 229,292 people have died of COVID in the United States, and at least 1,150,619 souls have been lost from this planet. As simchas and jobs and routines and childcare and in-person school and hugs from grandchildren and parents and dreams have been put on hold, as smiles are hidden and words are muffled beneath masks. I want to name these things, these losses. I want to keep naming them because grief is not linear and we are still in the middle of all this and we don't know when and we don't know how it will end. And still each week we come back to our Torah. We look to our ancestors for wisdom about resilience for a message about how we can keep going, how we can cling to life and stay connected and root ourselves in love as the waters rise. This spring, I reread the book, Man's Search for Meaning, in which the psychologist Viktor Frankl writes about his experiences in concentration camps during the Shoah. He shares one story about a young woman who died in the camp and about what sustained her during her time there, how she managed to find an opening for light. And I want to share with this with you today. Viktor Frankl writes, it is a simple story. There is little to tell, and it may sound as if I had invented it, but to me it seems like a poem. This young woman knew that she would die in the next few days. But when I talked to her, she was cheerful in spite of this knowledge. I am grateful that fate has hit me so hard, she told me. In my former life, I was spoiled and did not take spiritual accomplishments seriously. Pointing through the window of the hut, she said, this tree here is the only friend I have in my loneliness. 
Through that window, she could see just one branch of a chestnut tree. And on the branch were two blossoms. I often talk to this tree, she said to me. I was startled and, and didn't quite know how to take her words. Was she delirious? Did she have occasional hallucinations? Anxiously, I asked her if the tree replied. Yes. What did it say to her? She answered, it said to me, I am here. I am here. I am life, eternal life. I am here. I am here. I am life, eternal life. God said to Noah, Sohar ta'ase la teva, make an opening in the ark for the light to shine through. Make an opening in the ark for life to shine through. Sohar ta'ase la teva, so that you will look and remember, I am here. I am here. I am life, eternal life. In these times, I'm curious for each one of you, what is your Tsohar? What is your opening for light? What keeps you connected to the life force within you and around you? What is your window to something beyond yourself, outside of your ark? What is the portal through which your light can shine through to others? What is the precious thing that is anchoring you right now? Maybe it's Zoom calls with old friends or juicy Torah learning webinars from all over the place or gathering with our BZBI community or walking in nature or baking or tending to a pet or a plant or a child. Maybe it's playing music, listening to music, reading, writing, poetry, maybe it's prayer. The Baal Shem Tov, the Besht, wrote a gorgeous commentary about how prayer can be a Sohar. He bases his commentary on the fact that the Torah's term for ark, teva, also means word in rabbinic Hebrew. Teva can be ark, teva can also mean word. And the Besht writes, the ark of Noah is the word of prayer. Sohar ta'asela teva, make yourself a window for the ark, means let the words of prayer be a window through which you see to the ends of the earth. Let the words of prayer be a window through which you see to the ends of the earth. As we move through this time of intensity and uncertainty, I want to invite us all to come back to prayer, to come back to the life-giving power of the words of our tradition and the words of our hearts, of prayer in community and the ways we're able to do it. May our prayers be for us a window giving us perspective as we tell the stories of the resilience of our ancestors, as we remember that we are not alone, as we remember that the source of life and love loves us with an everlasting love, always. As so many of our structures have fallen away, let our prayers let our Jewish practice, our mitzvot, our marking of the rhythms of time, our holy Shabbat be a shining jewel that orients us in time. After 40 days in the darkness of the ark, Noah opens the window. He sends out the raven who flies laps around the sky and returns without news. He sends out the dove who at first finds no branches on which to rest and returns. Noah waits. Seven days he waits and he tries again. This time the dove comes back with an olive branch in its beak and Noah knows that the waters have receded. 
He waits another seven days and sends the dove out again. When the dove does not return, he knows that the earth has dried up, that life has returned. And that the life that he has managed to sustain within the ark will continue, that it will take root again. As we are tossed by the waves, as we float along these waters, I pray that we may open our windows and that we may continue to strive together to find firm footing. May we be for one another at Sohar. May we help each other to find the courage to connect to life again and again. Hi, I Hi da 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 Hi, <laughs> <laughs>